Welcome back to part two of this tutorial on QLab. In this part, we're gonna talk about visual cues. Now, chances are you are not building your QLab on the computer at the theater where your show is going up. If you're building a show with visual cues on your home computer, you'll need to tweak some settings first. Now, if you're like I was when I first learned QLab, what we're about to look at could seem overwhelming at first, but just stick with me. It is not as complicated as it looks. So click this gear wheel on the bottom right. That brings us up to your workspace settings. We're going to go over these in detail in part three, but for now, just click on video in the left column. Now, what you see here will depend on how many monitors your computer has. If you only have one monitor, you'll only see Surface 1. Regardless, Surface 1 should be your workspace's default surface. A surface is QLab's term for a screen or projector you can put visual cues on. So on Surface 1, click on Edit. Now we want to prepare this surface to be replaced with the projector at the theater where your show is going up. A standard projector's dimensions are 1920 by 1080. That is what the projectors at the UCB and PAC theaters are in LA. So to prepare your project in that resolution, we're going to change these dimensions to 1920 by 1080. We're also going to check keep rendering between cues. That'll keep the desktop from showing when there aren't any visual cues running. All right, now let's close out of that. For our last bit of setup, when building a show with visual cues, we need to open the audition window. Now to do that, go to window and audition window. The audition window will show us what will be on the projector when you bring your project to the theater. You'll notice when you have the audition window open, the go button now says audition. Don't worry, it still works the same way. We use the audition window so that we can see our visual cues and our QLab workspace on the same screen while we're building it. All right, now we are ready to bring in some visual cues. QLab can handle a variety of different video and image types. So to start us off, I'm going to drag in this video file of my old sketch team playing with some baby goats. And visual cues behave just like audio cues in a workspace. We can select our cue in the cue list and hit spacebar and the video will play right there in our audition window. Now, if the video is too big like it is right now or you don't see it at all, uh, just try clicking on fit here and that should let you see the entire surface. Uh, you can also make the audition window bigger and hit fit again and uh, that can be really helpful for working with the audition window. And now just like with audio cues, we can add a stop cue for this video cue and when we hit audition on it or spacebar, it will stop. Now, as I said, QLab can work with a lot of different video files, but some do work better than others. Often when I've teched for class shows, especially I've had students bring me really weirdly formatted video files, stuff with weird non-standard frame rates, stuff from Windows Media Player is often a problem. And chances are if you're organizing tech for your sketch team, uh, one of your teammates is probably gonna bring you a weirdly formatted video file at some point that won't work well with QLab. And there's one simple trick that almost always solves that problem for me. So if you've got a troublesome video file, what I recommend is open it in QuickTime Player. Then when you have it open, go to File, Export As, click on 1080p or whatever's highest that isn't grayed out, and then save it uh, wherever you want to save it. And QLab will compress the video for you and save it as a new file. And for me, that MOV file that QuickTime exports plays flawlessly in QLab every time. Now let's look at images. I am going to drag in this folder of images that I found on my computer. And just like everything else, when you hit spacebar on a cue, that will trigger it. And we can see it right there in the audition window. And if I hit spacebar again, we see the next image. But notice what happened. There was no stop cue for the last image, so that image didn't stop. It's still there. We can see it under the new image I just triggered. You can also see that it's still playing by this little play icon on it. Um, now let's see how we can fix that. I'm gonna hit escape to panic out. And let's say that we're doing a show where an actor is on stage talking us through a slideshow of pictures, and all of these pictures are in that slideshow. So we want to see a bunch of pictures in a row, each new one replacing the last one. Well, what we can do is we can use what we know about stop cues and follow cues to make that happen. I can add a stop cue after the first image, and then I can add an auto continue on it so that it will automatically go to the second image. Oh, so let's see how that works. I'm going to hit spacebar, then I'll hit spacebar again, 
Okay, so that worked, but now if we wanna do that with all of these pictures, I will have to add a stop cue and an auto continue on each one. And that can get just a little bit time consuming and I think it's a little inefficient. So let me show you a better way. I'm gonna delete those stop cues now and I'm gonna panic out before I do it. Great, so now I've gotten all those stop cues out of there. Now this time, uh, let's go ahead and select all of these photos and let's add a trigger. So go into the triggers tab on uh, the inspector here and click on fade and stop peers over time and make that zero seconds. If it's set to zero, then it will just hard stop all peers without a fade. Uh, and now when we trigger any of these cues, they will automatically stop whatever cue is playing. The effect being that we can quickly advance through them like a slideshow, no stop cues necessary. But you might be asking, what if I don't wanna stop all other cues every time I play a photo? What if, for example, we wanted an audio cue to be playing during this? Maybe our train sounds from part one. Well, that's a good question because as we have it set up now, if we have our train sounds playing, then that trigger we added will stop the train sounds when we play any of our photos. That is because the trigger is stopping all peers. So all we need to do to fix that is make the train sounds and the photos not peers anymore. So the way we do that is to put all of these images into a group. The way we do that is select all of them and go to this group icon here in the toolbar. And now they're in a group and we'll just name that slideshow. Cool. Now, when we play our train sounds and our slideshow, the train sounds can keep on chugging. When we added that trigger, it said fade and stop peers. The peers part means it will only affect other cues on the same level in the same group. And because our train sounds cue isn't in the slideshow group that we just made, it won't stop when we go through the photos. I recommend playing around with the fade and stop trigger because it can be really, really handy uh, in a lot of different uh, situations. I'll often use it on a blackout song because that's a clean way to kill whatever cues might be playing in a sketch and go right into the blackout song. One thing that's also really helpful for cue labs with visual cues is to start the project with a black frame. Uh, to grab one of those, you can just go to Google Images and you can search black 1920 by 1080. And uh, this one's actually a pretty good option right here. So you can save image as, desktop, download it to your desktop or wherever, drag it into your project. And then you have a uh, black screen that you can start your project with. Uh, putting that at the top just lets your tech person black out the screen before the show starts so that you don't start your show with the computer's desktop showing. All right, now you have a basic understanding of visual cues. Uh, if you've made it this far in the tutorial, I promise you are through the worst of it. In part three, I'm gonna talk about custom settings, organization, and tech scripts.